So we're about to have a conversation about what happens when a physicist collides with an artist, specifically looking at the work that FIU professor Pete Markowitz and I, Xavier Mercado, an artist at FIU, did together in our collaboration. It's a process where we looked at art and science and the importance of a collision. A collision is motion, basically. It's two things moving at one another. Nothing moves faster than what happens inside the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva, at CERN, at the CMS lab. And these are the banners that were created in that process when we worked together. I took my work at the South Pole as an NSF awardee as a point of departure. In this case, things were moving really slow at 10 meters a year. This is a moving ice that I constructed into a timesheet as part of my work there. I was looking at place and creating art about place, time, how time moves through place. Here we look at process. Here I work with 400 volunteers to generate the DNA sequence randomly at a museum exhibit. We traded my art for their DNA, and that moved really, really fast. I got the big end of the deal because I got their DNA. All they got was a drawing. I get to own their DNA, and I think that's kind of cool. What I do with my art is look at processes and look at ways in which artists and scientists can work together to move humanity forward, to have an exchange, to have a collision. And I want to talk about the science of things, particularly the science of physics, and I'm going to let Pete take it from here. Hi, I'm Pete Markowitz. I'm a professor of physics at Florida International University, and I'm a fellow in the Honors College there. And together with Xavier, we spent the past couple of years, actually, uh, mostly on Friday afternoons, having talks about what physicists do, how do we measure what we think we know about the universe, how do the experiments go, what's life like for a physicist. And part of our lives involve things like this compact muon solenoid you see here, very, very large experiments where we're trying to probe very, very short distances and look for very, very small objects. So this is a, a five-story tall object. It's the largest, most complex object which has ever been built by mankind. It's also one of the densest. And what we do there in the uh, accelerator CERN is we collide bunches of protons together very, very energetically. And we look at those very violent collisions, and just like Einstein told us, E equals MC squared, we take the kinetic energy of the collision and we use it to produce new particles that weren't there in the first place. And from those collisions then, we spent the last couple of years trying to figure out what makes up the universe around us. And this is one of the images we get from those collisions. This is, uh, we're not Hollywood special effects guys, but this is how we try to make sense of those collisions. This is one of the event pictures that we get from those collisions, and that we use as the basis for those banners you saw a few minutes ago. And last July 4th, 2012, we announced that we had discovered a new particle that we suspected, and we've now confirmed, was the Higgs boson. Yeah, so th there's five banners that Pete and I created to help explain how that discovery of the God particle happened, looking at five different processes. And Pete's going to talk to you about each of these five banners and processes, but each of them I take as a point to tell you about why we did it. In each banner we have every single article published by this collaboration about the science behind the discovery of the God particle. So I literally have hundreds of scientific articles to my name, and I've got one art exhibit, this one that we've worked with Xavier on. <laughs> Each of these banners had several hundred of these pages written in the background, and it's hard to see in this image, but in the background these banners are all made up of very, very uh, complex layers. Each of the banners in turn has one of those event pictures you saw a second ago, which talk about we don't actually detect the Higgs itself because it, it decays too quick for us to see. But we can see particles like gammas, which we are shorthand for photons, so particles of light. We can see particles like the Ws that you saw a few minutes ago. <laughs> so this is all being done by 4,000 scientists and engineers across the planet in universities and laboratories across the globe. These are people working together under extraordinary, it's the biggest science happening on the planet. And I wanted to honor that, so each of the banners has as a backdrop one of the five components of their logo. And here you can see another one of those uh, banners. This is talking about two bottom quarks, which when we put together their energy, we put together their mass, and we ask, where do they come from? Kind of like if 20 years ago, you remember David Letterman used to throw TV sets off the top of tall buildings? Somehow, at, at one in the morning, that was really entertaining. We do something similar. We reconstruct that television set. But they do so by standing on the shoulders of the people that came before them through the centuries. So I took every piece of these banners made from their work 
but I did a little Adobe filter and did it in oil painting as a background. Try to give a nod to the Newtonians in the building, right? Try to give a nod not just to them, but to the physicists that he's teaching at FIU today. It's a way of connecting our humanity across time. So here, the tau is a particle that's kind of a cousin to the electron. And uh, here you can see one of the event displays coming from there. But you can also see a lot more of the complexity that's in these banners. Banners was purposely chosen. The armies used to come home from successful campaigns with banners, right? This was a scientific campaign that we came home with new results from. But these banners also talk about new cathedrals. Because this happened in an extraordinary place 100 meters below the ground that took decades to build. It took decades for it to happen. And in many ways, science gets refuted today. We talked a lot about this in our discussions and it led to this. So this is the above ground site, and you can see uh, the windows. Originally we were planning on doing this in stained glass, and the banners were going to be made of stained glass. Plans changed, they evolved. But you can see an homage that th there's aspects of stained glass in each of these works. And the stained glass was a nod to the fact that in some ways mankind relies on science now in the same way we used to blindly put our faith in religion. So this big event that happened in July of last year helped prove the Higgs theory. It helped bring science to life. And I wanted to mark that moment. So these aren't just banners, these are markers where we transformed physicists into the very quarks they study at the location where they found the Higgs particle. So you can see that they're wearing different color hats. We chose six colors because there's six types of quarks that we know about in the universe. And we put little flashing LEDs on top of them. Technically, the quarks interact by the exchange of something called gluons. We, we didn't know how to do that. These guys interact by the exchange of particles of light, photons, which you saw with your eye, but the LEDs on top of the ball caps emitted them. So E equals MC squared. You get energy, lots of energy. You collide stuff and you create mass. Here in Miami, we can do the same thing. Let's put our energy together and collide. Thank you so much.